Well, hello everybody. Doppler Dave here at ABC 7 TV uh, here in El Paso and just good to be with you guys to be able to kind of give you an idea of what I go through every day preparing for the weather on the TV. I go by Doppler Dave, not Dr. Dave. Some people get it confused, call me Dr. Dave, but it's Doppler Dave. And the reason we do Doppler Dave because of Doppler radar. It's used all over the entire world. And it's easy for folks to remember. Obviously, my first name is Dave, so Doppler Dave kind of uh, has that ring to it. A lot of people call me Doppler Dave or, or just Doppler uh, for short. So when I'm out and about here and there, that's how they refer to me. Most people will not recall my last name because they're just used to Doppler Dave all the time. So sometimes I'll ask them, well, what's my last name? They, they can't recall that. But anyway, so this is, uh, this is where I spend most of my day, you know, eight, nine hours per day. You'll notice all the computers here that we have, and each computer has a purpose. And I know a lot of you kids are on the computers all the time, so computers are very important. But let me just give you a little quick tour of what we're looking at. All right, this computer right here, uh, it says right here, this is my hand tracker. So this is something that I have to put in start mode to be able to do the weather by the weather wall. And we'll look at that weather wall and look at that in just a little bit. Uh, this computer right here, is our storm worn computer. So anytime there's a severe weather alert, sometimes you've been watching TV and you see a crawl on the bottom of the screen. Uh, it says like severe thunderstorm warning for certain counties or flood warning or winter storm warning. That's all done through this computer. And I can take it off the air, put it back on the air. I can edit it a little bit. So that's all done on that one. This one right here, my basic internet computer. So I have all the computer models that I look through on a daily basis. So before I start putting my weather together, I go through all these models and uh, figure out where the storms are going to be, and, and then that goes into forecasting. So here's my main computer. I'm on this most of the day. So this is basically what you see when you watch our weathercast, but I'm in the weather lab doing it. This map right here is current temperatures. This is automatically automated every hour. I don't have to do anything to this map. It populates every time. Uh, the new current conditions come up towards the top of the hour. But we do our own graphics. You know, when you're doing weather, you have to be a graphic artist. So a lot of you kids I know in, in school are, are doing a lot of that already. So we have to have an idea of, of what colors people like to see, what really sticks out. That's, you know, the, the training that we have to get besides the weather. But so this map, uh, this is kind of a full slot of my weather show. I have a lot of slides to choose from. You can see as I go through it, uh, I have uh, 185 different slides in my weather cast. And basically, I turn them on and turn them off. You see here, if I want to skip this slide, this is going to be part of my show, I turn it off. Just skip it. I can skip all these slides or I can put them in the show. Some of these have to be edited. Some are automatically updated every hour or the entire day. For instance, look at this slide right here. This is our, our smoke tracker. And if you look over here, this shows that model. This is a computer model of where we're going to see smoke potentially from the fires out to the west. You see the time frame here. It continues to move. It's showing some light smoke across the entire region. If I go to, let's go to another map here. Let's go to this windcast. This is a map that I have to make on a daily basis. And this shows the wind direction and the wind speed over the next seven days. So I have to actually go in here and manually change this depending on the computer models that we use. So this is my main platform that I work on every day. Spent a lot of time on this and go through it and pick out what I'm going to put in each show. Now we have a four o'clock show from four to five, a five o'clock, a six o'clock and a 10 o'clock show. So basically I'm doing four shows a day and I try to make shows different. Every show is going to be a little bit different because we realize people watch us every show. So my job is to give the significant weather details in every show, but change it up a little bit uh, because I want to make, you know, people want to see different things. I have different maps in every show, different background graphics I put in because I realize again, people watch us all the time over here. This computer I really don't use much. I'll use it if I have to. This is our weather and our traffic computer. And you can see it's all related to traffic that we do. And we can zoom in and zoom out of traffic uh, and show where there's 
traffic issues, right? On the east side of town, everything is flowing pretty smooth. That's why you see a lot of green on the map. If we had some reds, that's where the traffic is a little bit slower. So as you can see, a lot of computers here in the weather lab, but primarily this is my main one that I use, and these are kind of secondary computers. Another one I want to show you is our WeatherNet sites. So if we go over here, uh, we can change this map around. These are weather stations located at various schools all across El Paso and even some in the Las Cruces area. So I can flip through here, show what the temperature, War Eagles Air Museum, Putnam Elementary School, uh, Texas Tech Trans Mountain. We got different parameters, weather data we can show. And then this is, when you watch this, this is the weather on the side that we do. And this computer is devoted to that. So it flips through Riodoso, it flips through Alamogordo, Deming, just shows them the seven day forecast. So while I'm doing the weather for El Paso and Las Cruces, other people that they're concerned about Riodoso or Deming, they can see their local forecast conveniently on the side. So this is the computer that controls that. All right, I'm going to take it to the green screen and we're going to check the green screen out and how that works with my clicker. We're going to do that next. All right, here's the weather wall. This is, this is where I stand when I do the weather at 4, 5, 6, and 10. As you can see, we have monitors on each side, and these monitors is what I look at when I do the weather. All right, so I have a green screen behind me. A lot of you are familiar with just a blank green screen, so I don't see anything on it, but I'm superimposed with the weather graphics. And what I do is I just look to the sides, and I can kind of see what graphic I'm talking about. You'll notice if we look at the camera in front of me that I look at, there is no teleprompter, meaning there are no words on the screen, okay? I look at my map and I just ad lib, all right? So I'm not reading words off the screen. The news anchors have the words on the screen because obviously they can't remember and memorize their entire show, entire scripts. But what I do is I just uh, do like an impromptu speech. I know my subject because I'm, remember I'm building the graphics, I'm putting it all together. So every time I see the graphic, all I do is talk about it. So it's fairly simple once you do it. Uh, as I move through my screens, you can see I'll go to my next map. Here's the smoke tracker, you know, that we were talking about. So what I do is I'll just show, hey, this is 6 o'clock. This is where the smoke is likely to develop from some of the fires. And you see how I just kind of talk about it as I see the graphic. And again, I look at the camera in front of me because I can see myself standing in front of it so I can talk to the folks at home and point out the temperatures, right? 69 in Las Cruces, up a truth of consequence is 67, Alamogordo at 66 degrees. So I try to have eye contact. We know eye contact is very important when you're giving a speech and talking to people. So by seeing myself in the screen in front of me, I'm able to do that. Now I have a clicker here. This is what I hold into my hand. And every time, I, each button has a function on this clicker. When I hit the middle, we put a little felt on it because we kind of feel our way around, right? It's like uh, maybe Braille for uh, people who uh, can't see and, and are blind, they have to feel. So we do that with our clicker, so we don't always have to look down at it. So we have to kind of memorize all these buttons and what they mean. When I click on this button, you'll see my map will change, all right? So I click on it and it goes to my next graphic, all right, which is the day planner. I click on it again, it will move on to my next graphic. So that's how I control the flow of things. Uh, there's also what they call a panic button. If you look here, it says P, all right? P for panic. So what that means is when I hit that button, it will advance to the seven day forecast. The seven day is my last graphic that I do on the map. So normally I wear an earpiece and the guys in the back and the girls that control the show, uh, they can talk to me. And if I'm running late, I'm running too long on my weather cast, they tell me, wrap it up. They'll go, Doppler Dave, wrap it up, wrap it up. So if I'm still in the middle of my show, I can hit the panic button, and that will automatically advance to the last slide of my show, which I know is the seven-day forecast. That's usually where I end the show, and I can get right to it and get out of the show. So there may be breaking news or... Uh, some kind of breaking sports news because sports follows me where I have to get out pretty quick. So that's what I use. All right, we're going to talk about telestrating and we're going to move into the telestration point of things, you know, where I draw the screen. That'll be coming up next here. All right, so this is the telestration, a uh, part of the show that I do. 
Uh, normally when we have severe weather, and I'm talking about a lot of storms across the area, and obviously you could see we're not tracking any storms here in town. We got a kind of a clear slate as far as our uh, forecast is concerned. But what we're doing here is I can control the graphics on the computer uh, through the clicker here. Uh, you see these three top buttons. Uh, that allows me, that, that acts as like a mouse. I put my finger on it and then my hand, my finger is a mouse and I can maneuver the maps on the, uh, the system here at the wall. So very neat. This is kind of the latest and greatest technology that we're using. I primarily use this for severe weather. Uh, so when I'm on the wall, I can manipulate uh, my palette, so to speak, and draw and that type of thing. Let me show you how it works, okay? So here's the map. All these functions, you can see, as I move my finger along them, I can change things around. For instance, if I want to move the map here, I'll click on over here. This is my, my little mover here. And then what I do, I click on this button here, and I point my finger wherever I want to move it which is pretty cool, right? So if I want to zoom into El Paso, in fact, let me just go ahead and find some rain out there and some storms. Well, out to the east of us. And I see how I can just kind of move the map around, which is pretty neat. All right, so we go into Oklahoma City, uh, Tulsa area. That's what we're looking at. So I can zoom in, all right? So let's go into the Tulsa region. I can zoom in here and we can get really tight here and look at some of the storms that are developing. Look at that. All right, so that's pretty neat how I can just maneuver the maps while I'm talking about it. The difficulty is that while I'm talking and trying to carry on a conversation, tell people where the storms are, I have to also juggle moving graphics around and clicking on things. So you got to get used to it. It takes a little time here, but so here's some storms, right? So I have the radar in motion. If I want to stop the radar, I click up here and it stops it. Okay, then I can zoom in or zoom out and look at these storms, okay? And I can say, hey, this is where some of the heavier rain is located. I can also telestrate on it, all right? If I wanna do that, I hit my telestration tool here and I can circle maybe some of the heavier rain, all right? I can say, hey, this guy is really happy because he's getting some rain, you know? I can do all that kind of neat stuff, all right? I can take that off the screen. I can manipulate the radar and go to El Paso or Holloman Air Force Base where they also have a radar. I can look at hail track and see if there's any hail going on. So that's another neat function of this tool here. I can just jog back and forth. I can look at the rain rate, how much it's raining per hour if we forecast over an hour's time period. I can look at wind rotation within a thunderstorm, velocity, all that kind of thing when we're talking about a severe weather. So that is a neat function. Then. I also have a function up here, right? And this will put on various functions of my map, on my graphics. So when I'm done using the radar, I can say, hey, let's look at our current temperatures, right? I highlight it, I click on it with my clicker, it'll show me the temperatures. I can go through my show here. I can say, all right, how about tomorrow's high temps? I click on tomorrow's highs, that'll show me the high temperatures that we are looking at. I can go through here. Uh, let's go about the, let's talk about the winds on the west side of town. We were talking about this the other day, how the winds would be maybe 40, 45 on the west side. So I have all these functions that I can do. Future track model, I'll click on that. That'll show how much rain is being projected by the model over time. And then I can go to the seven day forecast. I just click on that and that'll give me the seven day. So what's neat about this, everything is controllable at the wall. So I don't have to rely on having somebody back in the weather lab doing some stuff for me. But again, we only use this primarily during our severe weather when we have storms or winter storms because that's where I want to stay on the screen and I want to work with the radar and I want to show how much rain is coming down and zoom around. So that's how I'm able to, to do that with this uh, clicker here. So that's some of the latest and greatest fun that we have here at the ABC7 Weather Lab and at the Weather Wall. So I hope that gives you a little explanation about how I do my job, how we do the weather here at the, uh, the station. So each person has to function as not only a, a, a weather person, a meteorologist, but also as a graphic artist, right? Like I told you beginning, we have to do all that in combination and uh, that's what uh, our job requires and job requirements and if any of you want to uh, be a meteorologist or go into television weather, I'm certainly available to uh, talk about it and answer any questions you have. So thanks for joining me today.